today I will give you introduction uh, for our practical uh, in bone pathology. So as a customary, uh, I would like to share some life lessons uh, before we start. So this is the quote by D.H. Lawrence, the eyes don't see what mind doesn't know. So <coughs> what I would like to highlight uh, in this quote is uh, you must uh, try to uh, to make sense of what you see and what you learn so that you can uh, turn into the practical knowledge uh, later on. So whatever we teach you uh, now, uh, we would like you to remember uh, most of our learning, uh, learning objectives and uh, just master them and uh, try to uh, correlate uh, with the clinical aspect uh, so that uh, it will make sense and you remember better. So next time when you see the case uh, looks similar with the textbook, then you, uh, then you know. If you don't learn that, uh, if it is uh, appear in front of your eyes, then you also doesn't know uh, what is what is the 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 finding. Uh, like you see the his in histology, uh, to train uh, to untrain eyes. You just see uh, black dots in the background of pink. But if in trained eyes, you can see, oh, this is benign, uh, this is uh, granuloma, this is a uh, tumor, this is malignant tumor. So that, that is what we want to, uh, to uh, you guys to learn so that you, it could be useful for you later on. So, uh, so before we go to the pathology, uh, we must know the normal histology first. Uh, so, uh, as uh, bone is actually classified into three general groups, flat bone, cuboid bone, and tubular bone. So, uh, tubular bone uh, is, consists of three regions, epiphysis, metaphysis, and diaphysis. diaphysis. So, epiphysis is uh, the region where it extends from articular surface to growth plate, Metaphysis is the region where uh, it is extending from the growth plate to diaphysis and diaphysis is the narrowest portion of the tubular bone. So this is the anatomic region of the bone. As I mentioned earlier, the epiphysis is from the articular surface to growth plate. Metaphysis from growth plate to uh, diaphysis and diaphysis is the, the narrowest portion. So why it is important? Because... Uh, Different area of the bone uh, has uh, different predisposition, predisposition to disease, uh, particularly if it is, uh, uh, it is a neoplastic or tumor. So different tumor affect different area of the bone. Later, I will explain. So uh, within the uh, tubular bone, uh, the outermost is uh, the articular cartilage, uh, the cortex or uh, if the articular cartilage is the cortex and uh, below that is the periosteum then below the periosteum you have this uh, compact cortical bone and uh, it, uh, beneath the compact cortical bone you have medullary trabecular bone and the deepest one you have medullary cavity so uh, if you take the histology uh, this is the area uh, at the periosteum the outermost uh, you have this uh, compact, uh, uh, the part of compact bone, and this is the part of the fibrous tissue. And here you see this is the uh, cortical or compact bone. You can see here this is the, uh, the this is the, um, this is a, a bone with the lamella bone with the uh, vascular spaces in between. Here uh, in the deeper area you can see. Still, uh, within the compact bone, you have um, uh, this is a lame lamella bone, which is mature bone. Uh, then you you can see the nucleus. Usually, the nucleus is very small. It's like a dot-like, and uh, within it, you have these islands of vessels. So, uh, as you go deeper, this is uh, what the marrow spaces looks like. So, you have this trabecular bone. Uh, with uh, rim by this uh, flat osteoblast and you have this uh, 
adipocytes as well as hematopoietic cells. So uh, this proportion is uh, different. Usually in uh, pediatric age group, you have more of the uh, hematopoietic uh, component rather than adipocytic component. Uh, if it is elderly, you have more of the adipocytic component and the hematopoietic component is getting less. That is for normal histology. Uh, for pathology, dif uh, it will have a different uh, different proportion. Lah. So, okay. Uh, for our practical, we have uh, three uh, we have three uh, gross specimen, and uh, we have only one uh, histological slides. So, uh, for the next practical, uh, I would like you to focus more on the uh, on the uh, gross specimen, and. Uh, and uh, also, then you can follow up with the uh, histology slide. So, uh, so the first three cases is about the gross specimen. However, I just attach uh, what it looks like if we take the uh, if we take the biopsy from the uh, or we take sample from the specimen. So the first case, okay, for the first uh, gross specimen, uh, you can see here. Generally, uh, the bone is quite pale and in the cut surface, you can see multiple areas of yellowish, pale, opaque area like this area. You can see it's quite pale, opaque and you can see uh, there is a hyperemic, uh, a bit dark uh, brown uh, fibrous tissue adjacent to it uh, at uh, near the, the area the adjacent to the uh, yellowish uh, pale area uh, so uh, if you see the articular surface you see it is uh, quite uh, irregular uh, you can see there is a cracking and folding and also there is a hyperemic fibrous tissue here so uh, at this is the area uh, where, where the articular surface is intact and uh, there is an area of abnormality here as well because it is uh, adjacent to the, uh, uh, the, the abnormal area. So what is this uh, yellowish opaque area? This is a uh, features of necrosis. So uh, when there is necrosis, usually it is, uh, it is quite pale uh, and also yellowish sometimes and adjacent to it you have this hyperemic fibrous tissue and if there is a necrosis uh, of the bone involving the articular surface the articular surface will have the uh, abnormality with cracking and folding uh, adjacent to the necrotic area so uh, if you take the histology uh, at that area you can see uh, there is uh, A is the area whereby the bone necrosis. If you see the normal histology, you see uh, the cortical, the compact bone, you see there is a nucleus. Uh, but in necrotic bone, usually uh, the nucleus is uh, rather absent. You can see uh, there is absence of nucleus. Uh, usually uh, in histology, we term it as a ghost cell. So uh, if you uh, adjacent to the necrotic bone you have a medullary area uh, in here you can see the medullary necrosis here and uh, in the C you can see fibrosis with areas of hemorrhage and D usually when there is a necrosis you have uh, adjacent inflammation so uh, inflammation uh, usually depends on the stages lah. early usually you have uh, neutrophil uh, and uh, usually when it goes uh, longer you have admixture of neutrophil and lymphocytes uh, as well as uh, uh, macrophages then after uh, it is uh, prolonged then you have mainly lymphocytes and uh, macrophages lah. so these are the histology of the lesion so what is the diagnosis this is the uh, case of aseptic osteonecrosis so uh, I hope you study uh, regarding this uh, in theory uh, usually aseptic osteonecrosis uh, usually uh, you don't see uh, a lot of uh, pus uh, grossly 
and uh, usually uh, you uh, usually it's uh, it is due to a problem uh, with the vascular supply so uh, like uh, in the case of avascular necrosis uh, so th there are a few syndromes uh, which uh, cause this but uh, I would like uh, I would not go into detail on that why is it important we have to remove it usually uh, to prevent uh, loss of function and also osteoarthritis so in the next case we have uh, uh, the second gross specimen you can see this is a crust, uh, cut section of the of the knee joint uh, you can see here uh, particularly most of the bony area is normal but you can see this uh, there are some area of yellowish uh, chalky white deposit here so uh, this is uh, actually a deposits of uh, urate crystals uh, so what is a deposit of urate crystal uh, common in what disease it is common in gouty arthritis so this uh, if you take the histology uh, of the abnormal area you can see there is a amorphous eosinophilic material surrounded by here fibrous tissue and X mixture of uh, chronic inflammatory cell, macrophages, uh, or, or histiocytes, and multinucleated giant cell. So this is uh, common adjacent to the amorphous eosinophilic material. So this is the case of gouty arthritis. So gouty arthritis, the pathophysiology is the deposition of urate crystal, uh, which is common in patient with hyperuricemia okay next case you have uh, you have this uh, distal femur so what happens to this distal femur you have this area of solid mass so this uh, solid mass is actually have uh, the epicenter means the predominant areas uh, where the tumor is uh, most uh, dense at is actually at the metaphysis so this is epiphysis from the articular surface to growth plate this is metaphysis from the growth plate to diaphysis so epicenter is at the metaphysis and invades uh, this is actually a solid lesion uh, with the yellowish cut surface irregular border and it is infiltrative you can see it is infiltrating the adjacent soft tissue so this is a, basically this is a case of malignant bone tumor so usually uh, when malignant bone tumor the commonest is osteosarcoma for primary uh, bone malignancy so this is the case of osteosarcoma so if you take the histology of the lesion you can see here there is a uh, <coughs> there is a malignant tumor uh, consists of this bone forming tumor you can see uh, this uh, tumor is actually consists of uh, malignant cell that are trying to form uh, trying to form a, a bone uh, which you can see here this is the uh, lace like calcification uh, and you can see the uh, irregular uh, calcification uh, then uh, if you uh, go in a higher magnification you can see the cells are pleomorphic uh, means varying in size and the nucleus is vesicular uh, and also there, there are some prominent nucleoli uh, like in this area this area prominent nucleoli prominent nucleoli and you have mitosis here okay and usually you have uh, a lot of necrosis but uh, not evident in these uh, pictures so uh, this 
uh, growth usually it is infiltrative growth uh, pattern so usually the edges are not well defined and it is infiltrating so these are the features as i mentioned just now it is infiltrative or permeative permeative growth pattern with cortical destruction and soft tissue invasion so the neoplastic cell usually have marked atypia pleomorphic hyperchromatic sometimes vesicular so uh, there are multiple morphology uh, sometimes you have epithelioid epithelioid means you see it looks epithelial plasma cytoid you see sometimes it is uh, eccentrically placed nucleoli, nuclei and spindle uh, it is uh, spindle in shape and sometimes it form uh, just dark small round blue cell sometimes it form clear cell sometimes you, it forms a giant tumor cell this is uh, predominantly in uh, osteoblastic osteosarcoma so the neoplastic bone uh, it should be present usually it presents uh, as a lace like uh, lace like calcification as you can see uh, i pointed out earlier like this one this is the lace like calcification by the malignant neoplastic cells lace like calcification so uh, there are part area part uh, you can see part of the uh, area you, with this decreased cytological atypia uh, at, at uh, of the neoplastic cell and trapped in bone matrix and you can see uh, okay again a neoplastic uh, deposition of neoplastic osteoid on the native trabeculae and uh, you can see also a non neoplastic giant cell so if there is a giant cell it doesn't necessarily mean giant cell tumor so uh, this patient uh, have a conventional osteosarcoma so uh, as i mentioned earlier usually in bone tumor uh, you have uh, any in any disease usually you have to correlate uh, with clinical and radiological finding particularly important in uh, in bone tumor so if the patient is young less than 30 years old if it is involving the metaphysis it is commonly osteosarcoma if it involves the epiphysis it is usually chondroblastoma and if in, uh, sometimes it, ha it can be infection as well if it is involved involving uh, metaphysis as well you can have aneurysmal bone cyst and chondroma uh, <coughs> and uh, osteochondroma and uh, you have uh, non-ossifying fibroma as well and if it is involved uh, near the diaphysis you can you you have ewing sarcoma and uh, eosinophilic granuloma or also known as langerhans cell histiocytosis so if it is more than 30 years old uh, first area you can see if it is at the epiphysis it is commonly uh, gct giant cell tumor if it is at the metaphysis uh, it might be chondrosarcoma and chondroma uh, and if it is near the diaphysis uh, it can be uh, metastasis or myeloma infiltration so what is the most common uh, malignant tumor of the bone the most common is metastasis but if it is a younger patient metastasis is less likely however usually you have to as i mentioned earlier you have to correlate with age uh, and also the location of the lesion and the characteristic uh, radiological characteristic before you go to pathology of the lesion uh, pathology uh, appearance of the lesion uh, so uh, i hope you learn uh, the radiological aspect for example in osteosarcoma you have this sunburst appearance on the x-ray involving the metaphysis uh, so that's part of it and usually in aneurysmal bone uh, cyst you have this uh, cystic area you can see in the uh, x-ray okay so i think that's all for from me uh, so uh, I, if you have any doubts you can have uh, you can ask questions in the practical session later on okay so that's all thank you very much